in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Good morning and welcome to our Eucharist from Mixon Parish Church from the High Altar on this the first third Sunday of Eastertide. You're very warmly welcome to join us this morning and we hope you gain something from our service. As we celebrate this Eucharist today, we give thanks to God for the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray for the coming of the Holy Spirit. And in the shadow of two significant funerals this week, that of Margaret Goodair on Wednesday here in the parish church, and that of His Royal Highness Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, yesterday at Windsor, we think about our own mortality and we ask God to bless us and to bless those around us with life that we may live that life abundantly and in the light of the resurrection. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Like Mary at the empty tomb, we fail to grasp the wonder of your presence. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Like the disciples behind locked doors, we are afraid to be seen as your followers. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Like Thomas in the upper room, we are slow to believe. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. come to the collect for this week, the third week of Eastertide, and you will have the collect on your notice sheet which you will have received yesterday. Let us pray. Risen Christ, you filled your disciples with boldness and fresh hope. Strengthen us to proclaim your risen life and fill us with your peace to the glory of God the Father. Amen. We pay attention to the reading.
a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Peter saw it, he addressed the people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. I am the first and the last, says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the eleven and their companions were talking about what they had heard, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your heart? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I, myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understanding the Scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, 
and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of all these things. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I speak in God's name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please make yourselves comfortable. You know, it is always frustrating, isn't it, to witness an event without knowing what it actually means. If we don't have the context, we don't know whether somebody being rude to another is friendly banter, for instance, or outright aggression. And from our own experiences, we know there's a huge difference between sharing experience and knowing what it means, between being part of an event and not understanding its significance. Jesus himself made the distinction between those who see and hear and those who perceive and understand, that deeper understanding. Being part of an event is no guarantee that we will necessarily understand it, as I've just explained. As T.S. Eliot observed, we had the experience but missed the meaning. That can happen so easily, can't it? And in today's Gospel, we see how the disciples cannot make sense of Jesus' recent death. Nor can they make sense of what is going on when Jesus appears to them. They are completely befuddled and bewildered. When Luke writes his Gospel, he writes it to strengthen the belief that Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is the Son of God. He has his own way of doing this, and when he comes to the story of the resurrection, he chooses to emphasize how only the risen Christ can make sense of the events of Good Friday and Easter Day that followed. By themselves, the disciples cannot arrive at an understanding of what is going on. They need the risen Christ to uncover the meaning of all that is happening. And it's not just today's Gospel reading where that happens. Think of the road to Emmaus, where those two people toddle along with Jesus for probably hours without realizing who it is. Now Luke demonstrates this dramatically in today's Gospel. The two disciples on the Emmaus would have wandered along to the road to be reunited to the assembly of Jesus' followers. Jesus, Luke tells us that two disciples told their story of what had happened on the road and how they had recognized Jesus at the breaking of the bread. But the question remains, can the assembled disciples actually make sense of all that has happened? This question is soon answered for Luke. For while the disciples are still talking, Jesus appears among them. And rather than rejoice in his presence, they're alarmed and they're frightened. Rather than recognizing Jesus, they think that they're seeing a ghost. They're unable to make sense of what is happening right there in their midst, right in front of them. Any more than they have been able to make sense of all those recent events that happened in Jerusalem. I suppose we can sympathise with them, can't we? Because all that happened so quickly on Good Friday, well, from Maundy Thursday night, overnight into Good Friday, and Jesus being killed, being crucified, must have been absolutely stunning to those people. They must have been totally overwhelmed with that bewilderment. And that bewilderment carries on. And they probably hold that memory in their mind even as Jesus appears to them. Now Luke serves notice that the appearance of the risen Lord is not by itself a compelling demonstration of that reality. By itself the appearance of Jesus does not open the disciples' eyes. It didn't go do that on the road to Emmaus and it doesn't do that now. 
Jesus appeals to the disciples' sense of touch. He says, look, my hands, my feet. See who it is they are touching. He appeals to their reason. For a ghost has no flesh and bones, neither can a ghost eat a piece of broiled fish. It's only when Jesus tells them what he meant when he was with them and opens their minds to understanding the scriptures that they come to believe in him and in what he says. Suddenly, it's like the synapse in the brain connects and everything makes sense. Well, at least some of it. By interpreting what has happened, the risen Lord Jesus Christ draws his disciples out of their confusion. The disciples cannot do that for themselves. They can't see for themselves. By themselves, they can't understand what is going on. For it is only Christ that can take them from mystery and confusion into revelation from confusion to understanding. And that is his Easter gift to them. In this new understanding, the disciples become witnesses, not just eyewitnesses to what has happened, but witnesses to the meaning of all that has taken place. So when Luke tells of the preaching of the early church in the Acts of the Apostles, which Andrew just read, like Peter's sermons we heard, the evangelist shows how they explain the meaning of the death and resurrection of Jesus. They were empowered by Jesus' teaching to understand fully what was going on. In all of this, Luke shows us how the understanding of the early church is firmly based on the teaching of the risen Jesus. And that is its unique authority. The way of the church today is even based on the unique experience of those first disciples. Thank God we had the evangelists to write down the stories and thank God Luke wrote the Acts of the Apostles that we might understand a little of what happened in those formative years. We will always be indebted to them for their insight and for all of the disciples and apostles' courage. And happily, they did not keep their new experience to themselves. They didn't secretly hoard that new insight. It was all shared with anyone who had ears to listen. Even somebody on the road to Emmaus that they've never met before, or so they thought. The first disciples turned their new experience into a message of good news for all people. Now the word mission, micho, I send out, the sending, the proclamation of repentance and forgiveness is something we experience by growth in our Christian life. We are sent as well. By the unconditional acceptance of God, when we approach him honestly and truthfully, we gain that insight and we are sent by God to others to spread that message today. It's not a doctrine to be taught or learned by rote, but it's a joyous, joyous example to be shared and to be passed on. Every generation, therefore, must make the message of Jesus its own and pass it on to others. It's a message enlivened by the witness of generations of Christians who have continued to have life in the sacred name and the sacred heart of Jesus. And we only keep the message alive ourselves by giving it away. And in that way, the gospel never dies. May we understand our mission to pass on the good news of the resurrection of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we move on to our prayers.
Jesus, our exalted Lord, has been given all authority. So let us seek his intercession that our prayers may be perfected by his prayer. Jesus Christ, great High Priest, living forever to intercede for us, we pray for the Church throughout the world. We pray that we may be united as one, as your prayer was that we should be as one. We pray for all Christians in their calling. We pray especially for our Anglican Church, for Christopher and Richard, our bishop, and all who minister around this area of South London. Heavenly Father, as we pray to you, we ask that we may be sent out with the joyful message of Easter time, determined to make sure that all who hear, hear the good news fully and completely and deeply. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, King of Righteousness, enthroned at the right hand of the Majesty on high, we pray for the world, and we pray that you will make it subject to your gentle rule. We pray for all in positions of authority. We pray for governments throughout the world, we pray for our own Queen and government. We pray especially for Her Majesty the Queen this day. We pray for all those areas of the world affected by drought, affected by famine, affected by poverty. We pray for the aid agencies that seek to help. We pray that we too may aid in their assistance. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, Son of Man, drawing humanity into the life of God. Pray for your sisters and brothers in need, distress, or sorrow. We remember especially Phil Parkinson, Rosie Ramswell, Dorothy Cummins Wood, Marjorie Jordan, Betty Smith, Paul Barry, and Tika Omunkwu. We pray for those mentioned in our intercessions book, and we pray for those who we carry in our own hearts this day. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord Jesus, pioneer of our salvation, bringing us to glory through your death and resurrection, Surround with your saints and angels those who have died, trusting your promises. We remember the recently departed. Rishin Conwell, Sue Hawkyard, His Royal Highness Prince Philip, Alan Halfacre, Tony Young, David Osai Kinnery, and Margaret Goodall. We pray for those whose years mind falls about this time. We give thanks for their lives, their love, and their example. Rest eternal grant them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord Jesus Christ, Lord over all things, ascended far above the heavens and filling the universe, pray for us to receive the gifts you give us to work in your service. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord Jesus Christ, keep the church in the unity of the Spirit and in the bond of peace and bring the whole created order to worship at your feet. 
For you are alive and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so we move to the peace. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Thank you very much. Let's share a sign of the peace with those around us and pray for those who we cannot see this morning. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. Be present, be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen High Priest. Make yourself known in the breaking of the bread. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. Lift your Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right to give thanks it is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, almighty and eternal Father. And in these days of Easter tide, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For the, by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in us the image of your glory. He has opened the gate to eternal life and invites us once more to be with him in paradise. And so, in the joy of this Passover, Earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and heavenly powers in all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of God and
wonderful is your love, O Lord. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you have embraced us as your own. When we turned away, your love remained steadfast. You raised up Jesus, our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms for us on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends, and taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take this, eat it, for this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks. And then he said, Drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Grace is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. As we offer up these gifts of your creation, Father, may they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, Lord. Remember your church in every land. Reveal her unity, guard her faith, and preserve her in peace, so that with Mary, the mother of God, Peter, Paul, and all the saints, we may share in the vision of that eternal splendor for which you have created us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, with songs of everlasting praise, blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, give us your peace. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. 
Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Living God, you made your Son known to his disciples in the breaking of the bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in all his redeeming work, who is alive and reigns with you now and forever. Amen. And we pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Amen indeed, and again a very warm welcome to you as you join us today at Mitcham Parish Church here. It's good to have you with us. A relatively quieter week here in the parish. We will be celebrating at 9.30 on Tuesday online, so we hope to see you all gathering with us then for Holy Communion, our midweek service at 9.30 on Tuesday. Other than that, our next appointment online is next Sunday morning at 10 o'clock again, and we look forward to seeing you then. Meanwhile, please do keep safe, take care, May God's blessing go with you this day. The Lord be with you. The God of peace who brought again from the dead, the Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Now go in the peace of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.